All right, well, we are going to go ahead and start. My name is Lori Williams. I am the coordinator for the Spark Flossy Pack Center. Uh, we are located here on campus at 4825 Truce. We have two um, classrooms that we utilize. One is in our space in room 112. Uh, the other we share with the uh, STEM program in 124. Uh, it is a much larger space than our space is. And um, a few folks in that space. Um, both rooms are smart classrooms, meaning that uh, all of the computer and uh, microphones and speakers and everything else are all integrated, so it makes it really seamless um, for us to do presentations. And then the other thing that Spark has that the rest of the university doesn't have is we have on-site um, technical system. Um, and you, you're looking at her right now. So, um, <laughs> but we'll talk more about that in a minute. Um, the reason I'm here today is because I want to invite you to share your passion for teaching with us. Um, Spark has been providing lifelong learning since 1993. We're getting ready to celebrate our 30th anniversary. As we uh, started out on the Penn Valley campus in 1993, and then in 1997, we moved from Penn Valley here to UMKC. Um, it provided us with a home on a Georgia college campus, and it provided the university with a lifelong learning institute. Uh, they are very forgiving about those instances. I will hop up from my desk and come to the podium and punch a couple of buttons or do things and make things work again. Um, the other thing I do when people are doing presentations like this is I will actually log into the Zoom from my desk. And so that way I'm seeing and hearing exactly what the people on Zoom are seeing and hearing. And that allows for me to know if when somebody sends me a chat message that they're having problems, whether it's a personal problem or a system problem. So this is a picture from 1997. And this is Vice Chancellor Spino back in the day. Wow. <laughs> he was in the forefront bringing us to UMKC, and he continues to be so supportive of our efforts, and we're so lucky to have them. The pandemic forced us to embrace Zoom. Um, as the threats of COVID began to subside, we found out that not everybody was ready to return to the classroom. So most of our classes now are hybrid which we refer to as being both in-person and available via Zoom at the same time. Think about that. And I know that you guys already know this because you're doing it right now, is we can also record these and then make them available to folks at a later time. And it has been wonderful because people don't have to worry about missing a class if they have a doctor's appointment or if you know, something better comes along. And they can catch up on the recording later. <laughs> and we are able to do this so seamlessly is because one of our families, Cassie um, Pack's family, gave us a very generous gift that allowed us to make those classrooms smart. And um, it has been a true, true gift. Um, these are some samples of our catalogs. Um, all of our quarters are six weeks long, with the exception of summer. Summer is always four weeks long. Most of our classes run 60 to 120 minutes, so an hour. Um, anything that's over an hour, we do a break in the middle uh, because, you know, we all need to stretch our legs and go powder our noses. Um, so we uh, 
post these classes to our website and we send out um, hard copy catalogs. Um, our fall catalog will go out August 25th and our online catalog will launch the same day. Say that we have fascinating classes for fascinating traditional order system. And we're in other ways. We are learning for learning's sake. We have programs, lectures, and tutors, and we start instructors from the beginning to the end. And we're going to look at each one of these in detail. For non traditional, non credit classes, no prerequisites, no tests, no grades. The other things that are exciting is that our target, target audience are adults who have a passion for learning. That's their hobby. They don't do any of the other traditional hobbies. They do things. And they are so engaged and so much more engaged than your typical set of students. Park members. Ten are adults that are 50 plus. Most are retired professionals. We have teachers, architects, you name it, we've got. It. They are well traveled. They read constantly. And I've had more than one of our instructors tell me they learned as much from the participants as they taught them. And I don't know about anybody else, but I think it's exciting when I go and do a presentation or I'm teaching somebody something and they're as excited about it as I am. And I have a little bit of a background in teaching and I taught people who could have cared less what I was telling them. So this is different, very different. It's more like a conversation than it is a lecture or a Q&A. Because our classes are not for credit, the requirements that you have in other teaching arenas don't exist. We don't have prerequisites and objectives. We don't have required goals. It is completely instructor driven. A little bit of experience in this field. And the reason that most people go into teaching is because they love sharing knowledge, especially about things they're passionate about. Is all of those other things having to make sure that you line up with whatever the objectives of the program overall are, making sure that you're hitting those marks. And then there's the whole thing about grading and pain in the behind as well. That's not, there are no tests, there are no grades. And in fact, we would have to kick you out as a teacher if you want to. So, <laughs> um, it's you're teaching without the work of evaluating students. Chloe, yes. while I was teaching, one of the reasons I did some quizzes, not to meet objectives, but to make sure that what I get back from the students is that they can follow what I tell them. Absolutely. That there is not a gap or I'm talking at completely the wrong level or right. assume too much or too little or things like that. And those kind of things would be perfect. And in fact, we have some instructors that will do those kind of quiz things, almost like a game. Yep. And so that makes it fun. And because our folks love learning, they also like to be able to show off the knowledge that they have. And that kind of a quiz situation would be a perfect opportunity for them to do that. 
love that idea. So that's the important thing is this is about you, your passions, and not having to evaluate students. Our instructors also get to decide their format. As I mentioned previously, a lot of our classes are hybrid, meaning that people attend both in person and via Zoom. However, we have other classes that are in person only. Those are classes like our Tai Chi class. I don't know how you would do Tai Chi via Zoom. I know that during the pandemic it happened, but I can't imagine that it was very effective. We also have classes that are very discussion-based. We had a class a couple of quarters ago that was about mental health issues. And it was important to that instructor that people feel comfortable talking about the things they needed to talk about. And having it recorded would be very important. So in that case, it was in-person only. We have an instructor right now who's teaching a hybrid class, and this is the other fun thing about Spark, who actually lives in Long Island, New York. Then for our class, every week he's teaching it again this quarter. He does a class on American history through art, and he's been showing us artwork that depicts different moments in history. He's gonna be moving into starting to show us photographs now. Zooms in from his little office at his house in Long Island. And we have folks that join us via Zoom and we have folks that come into the classroom to take his class because they don't by themselves. And we're able to do that. This particular instructor actually also does regular teaching gigs on cruise ships. So there was a quarter he was teaching for us when he had the opportunity to do a cruise gig. Sure. So, but um, again, we, we have lectures, we have interactive things. Most of our classes are participatory. So there's always questions and answers. Our folks like to share their knowledge and they're smart. They are so smart. They amaze me every single day. Um, and even our folks on Zoom participate. Most of the time, they will put a question or a comment in the chat box. And one of the things that I do, because remember, I'm logged in at my desk, I monitor that chat box. And so when I see that somebody has a question, that they need an answer to, I will pop up from my desk and show up in the back of the room and say, hey, Felicia, we can has a question on Zoom. And if it's a short question, I'll say it from the back of the room. If not, I will march up to the front, to the podium, and read it to her because sometimes I can remember this stuff, but sometimes our folks are so smart and have so much knowledge that I would butcher the question. So we like for our instructors to decide what works best for them and to call the shots on them. We've talked a little bit about that we provide programs, lecture department words, and these are some of the subject areas that we have. Our folks love history. They love art. Science is a big interest, but that's an area that we have trouble finding people and able to a couple of people in this room that have expertise in that area. So I'm talking to you right now. Um, music. In fact, this quarter we have an amazing class that is Conversations with Beethoven. It is going to be taught by one of the adjuncts from the conservatory, Dr. Jeff Savage. And we're gonna do it over at Distali Center. And he's going to talk about what was going on at the time when different sonatas were written. And then he's gonna play. It'd be so much fun. Uh, current events, we have had an ongoing class on um, the 
where the instructor is basically digesting all of the news and synthesizing it for us so that it's understandable. She's taken fall on. So um, I, I'm glad because she was worn out. <laughs> and then we do a lot of stuff that is not all of our members grew up here in Kansas City. And especially for those folks who have moved into the area, they love those classes because they don't know what they don't know about their own city. And then we find that some of us who have lived here all of our lives, I was 18 months old when we moved here, there's things they talk about that I didn't know. So we have a lot of fun. Other topics that aren't on this slide that we also <laughs> would love to learn more about. This is a little sampling of some of the history that we've done. Women in aviation. Uh, we had a Harry Truman reenactor. Uh, we've been doing an ongoing uh, series on civil rights. We are now into the modern era of civil rights. Um, so exciting. Art, we've had one on dance. We are always looking at artwork. It's very seldom we don't have either a tour or a class on artwork. A couple of quarters ago, we did a really unique class on print in Western art. I had no idea how intricate frames can be talked about how they were made, we talked about how they're preserved, and then we talked about how you choose a frame to really set off what is inside of it, and how some pictures don't look amazing. Science. Uh, this is our Retired Physicians Association. They're doing another set of classes for us this quarter. We're really excited to have them back. We've done quite a bit with the Missouri Conservation uh, Department. And then we had a retired astrophysicist from NASA who came and talked to us about the Webb Telescope. So we've had a lot of really fun um, courses. Uh, this is our music slide. Live music is always a big hit with us. A lot of classical music. But then the last couple of quarters, we've done a class specific to rock and roll. And the gentleman who teaches that class just has so much fun. And it is a very interactive class. He plays us music. Uh, this time he's gonna focus on the festivals. So Woodstock and some of the other festivals. And then uh, the music that came out in 1971. It's gonna be a lot of fun again. But that's something he's passionate about. And you can tell when you go to his classes. <clears throat> so the other thing to note is that our folks have a very wide variety of tastes. So I will have folks that will go both to the classical music courses and to the rock and roll courses. events, we've talked about Supreme Court hearings, we've talked about um, women's rights in the workforce, we've talked about the Ukraine, um, Russia. A slide that shows a couple of past Chiefs players. We are actually doing another uh, NFL class where um, it is being sponsored by the um, Chiefs Ambassadors Club, which are retired Chiefs players who played for the Chiefs for at least three years. Um, they will most likely have guest speakers again. Um, we've done tours around Kansas City of architecture. And uh, the top slide there shows us at the uh, Royal Stadium. We got to do a tour there. in my estimation anyway, one of the most important things is we support our instructors from beginning to end, from marketing to on-site assistance. We, from the instructor, 
a description of their class and a short bio. We put that in the catalog with everything else. We take those enrollments. We provide you with your participant list. We make sure that the participants know where to come, when to come, how to interact. We set up the Zoom meetings. Make sure that they get uh, participant evaluations at the end of the class. And then there for every class, as we've already talked about, being logged in, watching what's going on. Most of the time, I know there's a problem before the instructor does. Things. All you have to worry about is what you want to teach your participants and how you want to share that with them. Things on in the catalog and our website, we send out email blasts. We make sure that the attendance is taken. Um, we set up the Zoom components. If you have um, handouts, all I ask is that you send them to me. We make the copies. We make sure they get passed out. Every class has a class coordinator, which is a volunteer participant who introduces things, gets class started, reminds people to turn off their cell phones. People that uh, we um, encourage them to be participatory. Um, and then we take care of all the other things. So one of our goals, one of my goals, is to make this as easy for our instructors as your knowledge. We take care of all the hard work. And this is a little bit of a snippet of some of our folks. We've got a club. This is the big classroom that we share with Stel. Uh, these are some of our volunteers stuffing those catalogs into envelopes. This would be um, a participant talking to one of our guest speakers at the NFL class. And uh, that's one of our uh, students with Mike Garrett, who is a former Chiefs player. Uh, she actually went to school with him. It was really interesting. So that is Spark in a nutshell. Except that you haven't told us how Ritz will be able to get it. Yeah. <laughs> it is $50 a class session. So for a six week course, that's $300. We do collect um, a W 9 from you. So that if you hit that uh, IRS threshold, we can send you a 1099. Um, some of our instructors who just have so much fun with us, teach enough that they hit that. Some of them don't. Um, and that's the other thing is that we have opportunities for you to teach a one session class or a four to six week class. We even have some three week classes. And that's the beauty of our system is we are able to meet your needs. We're able to make the fact that our honorarium is really just that. It, it's an honorarium. It doesn't even begin to take into account all of the work and effort that you put into these classes. So it is absolutely make sure that we meet you halfway, halfway, and make it easy and enjoyable for you to do this. Regular teachers. Be able to say that you're one of my fan favorites. And we have them. David Jeter is a fan favorite. Carol McCallum is a fan favorite. Doug, Doug Shearer, my instructor out of New York, is becoming a fan favorite. They're the ones that people ask me, what are they teaching next? I want to be sure that I have a seat. <clears throat> Everybody in this room has potential to be a fan. The question.
Absolutely. Absolutely. They can join via Zoom. As long as it's not one of my classes that's in person. Time frame uh, here at work in terms of, let's say, today, somebody decides, yes, I'd like to do this. I'm thinking about some thoughts for topics. Mm -hmm. And then where do you go from there in terms of the time frame? Absolutely. What we would do is after you tell me that, I would put you in touch with somebody from our curriculum committee, which is another really important point that I forgot to mention. All of our classes, all of our class uh, lists for each quarter is planned by our curriculum committee and is made up entirely of volunteers. At the variety of topics and classes and the quality that it's all planned by volunteers still blows me away. But I would put you in touch with our volunteer curriculum committee. At this point, if you told me this today, we would be looking for winter quarter or our spring quarter. Wouldn't be for fall because we've got that all set. I'm waiting for one tour to confirm a date on me, and then it's going off to the printer. But the winter quarter will start mid-January, so it doesn't start in my, with the King Day, it starts the day after, and it'll run through the end of February. That would be our first opportunity to get you into our mix. And have some deadlines for you to get us um, your description, your bio. We like to have those usually about four weeks before the, the uh, catalog goes out, which goes out about three weeks before quarter starts. We um, then send you a little agreement that outlines everything that we need from you. The main thing is to have your presentation on a USB drive. So we can just plug it right into the system. Our system doesn't play well with external laptops. So it works best if you have it on USB. Some of our instructors have struggled with that. And so what we do is we ask them to bring their laptop in. And then I help them transfer their presentation to a USB. You have problems with Mac. Yeah, we have no Mac connections, but even PC connections for external laptops don't play nicely with the system. So, um, yeah, let them learn. Uh, and when I talk to IT about that, they haven't had really any recommendations on how to solve that other than put it on the USB. So, um, if you had handouts, you would email them to me at least um, three or four days before the class you wanted them handed out. I would print them out for our in-person people. I would email them to our Zoom participants. Um, we then welcome you with open arms and uh, have you start teaching and just be really excited to have you part of our family. Free water or free snacks? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, we have both. We, we have instructors. We do provide snacks for our participants. Um, I do a quarterly Costco run to uh, to load up on those. They're generally the little, uh, what you think of as the lunchbox bags of snacks. Um, that's another thing that evolved out of the pandemic is uh, we, we aren't nearly as excited about touching food that somebody else might not might have touched as well. Um, so all of that individually badged stuff is available. We have coffee, we have hot water for tea. Um, we, we're really about making everybody, both our participants and our instructors comfortable. Just another aspect, maybe following up on my question originally. Um, in terms of like potential quality control up front, in other mm -hmm. words, not all ideas are good ideas. Right. Uh, not all ideas should be classic. Is that where that curriculum committee is playing a role? Is that what I Absolutely. Absolutely. And then as part of the agreement that we send to you, 
we talk a little bit about um, the things that we expect of the instructor, as well as the things that you can expect from us. Um, and that's really where the evaluation piece comes in. Uh, there are times when something sounds really good on paper and where when you initially speak to somebody, they seem like they'd be very engaging. Then they're not. Right. And in those cases, there have been a few times when we have not invited somebody to come back and teach again. But I have to say that's our exception. It doesn't happen very often. And it doesn't happen when we are working with people who have adults, young adults granted, but adults in other settings. Because you already know those skills of picking up on interest levels of the people who are in the room with you. Already have those skills of understanding that if nobody asks a question, they're probably not engaged, especially with this group. We got the knowledge that some things sing to an audience and some things don't. So again, that's that's our exception, not our rule. What else can I answer for y'all? They like a four week class. Is that Monday through Friday or once okay. a week? Or? It's once a week. So if you uh, decide that you want to teach for us, one of the things that we'll look at is which day of the week would you like to teach? And would you prefer the 10 to noon slot? Or would you prefer the 1.30 to 3.30 slot? We do have a, an instructor this quarter who's actually coming to us from the Military College at Leavenworth. Of those slots. So we're doing two to four for him on Thursday afternoons. He's going to be talking to us about our relationship with China. It's going to be fascinating. But that, again, that goes back to how we work with our instructors to make things work for them so that we can really enjoy and cultivate the knowledge that they have. And they're right. So what, it's once a week for two, for two hours, potentially, or some people will only do that for 90 minutes. Uh, it just kind of depends on the person. So we usually do an hour or more or less, right? Do another hour or more or less. It just sort of depends on what we're doing. And the interest level of our folks. Our folks are not real shy about if they need a break and they feel like some of their friends need a break, they'll say, Come on, let's take a 10 minute break. <laughs> other thing is if you're not comfortable with people who are willing to assert themselves and um, and really be partners in the situation as opposed to being people that you're just pouring knowledge into um, this might not be the setting for you but for most of the folks that we work with they actually find that energizing And do you have anything that you'd like to add? Uh, yes, I always do. Uh, I'm Leanne Hayes. Um, I am the uh, one of the co-chairs of the curriculum committee, and I also am the president elect of the board. And I want to say thank you so much for uh, having us this afternoon and also I want to apologize for being slightly tardy <laughs> uh, if you want to write me a tardy slip I, I mean I respect that uh, <laughs> so the curriculum committee just is so excited about is to get uh, a receive a contact from someone such as yourselves who has some topic that they are passionate about, that they want to explore further, they contact us and say, I have an idea for a class. And we will 
just feel like it's Christmas morning if we get a call like that. And we want to hear about it. We want to know what, how you would like to develop that idea. And if you can present it for the usual six weeks or if you'd rather present it for a three week period, what you need, how, what the topic is. But what we do in the curriculum committee is we take that information and we determine where it needs to go in our particular class. Example, we would never want to schedule two music classes, okay, as an example, two hard uh, core history classes on the same day. We wouldn't want to. Yeah. So it's and, and we have a limited number of spots. So we want that information. We want to talk to as we can. And our curriculum committee work truly is year round. As soon as we're done with one quarter's planning, we are starting to work. We will put a good idea and a promising instructor on our list for the following quarter as soon as we all possible for it to work. And so I urge you, if you have an idea you would like to pursue, if you have a topic that you think would be amenable to our courses, call us up. Lori will get you to the right person and we can talk about it and make plans. I hope that we hear from you. I know that there must be dozens of them bouncing around right now as we speak. And what I uh, do you take people on tours, for example, here to the geology of the Zoom and the still Yes, we take people on tours every quarter. Our Friday afternoons are reserved for tours. And yes, we. I don't, have we ever had a spe tour specific to the geology collection? We have not, as but that, we, but that we, would be an excellent we, idea. We are having a 10th anniversary celebration, which is going to include an Insiders Academy with very short tours of those things, like the uh, Missouri Historical Society um, archives and the geology and the Mars uh, sound collection, but we're hoping to schedule longer tours with each one of those in 2024. So that is maybe doing a taste of what those would be and to already have in mind the tours mm -hmm. and be able to advertise them um, at the 30th anniversary celebration. It's going to be October 19th, which is a Thursday. Um, it'll be, I believe it's 5 to 6.30, 5, 5.30 to 7. I've had lost my mind. I apologize. I should have an hour just for the between cocktail hours. Um, uh, it'll be all over our website shortly. Um, we, but we, uh, this quarter, are going to do a walking tour of art on campus, and Chris Wolf at the bookstore is going to be leading that tour, and I'm personally super excited about that. Um, he, I've heard so many things about Chris's tours um, and how his uh, haunted tour that uh, it, it's it's sold out like that every year. Um, so. I know it's going to be fun, and I know that our participants are going to enjoy it. And it's online. It's yes. Also, the tour is online. Mm -hmm. No, the tour is not going to be online. Yeah. No, <laughs> our, our hunter tour with him, oh. the Madness College, is online. Yeah. Oh my God, well, I have to go check that out there. Yeah. Okay, we might have to link to that in our uh, our online catalog for that particular tour. Yeah. Right, I just said for our 30th anniversary celebration, we're having both at 4825 Truth in our class. It's 4 30 to 6 30 or 7. And then, then we're coming to the library 
for a couple of hours for wine and cheese to talk, and then I think there's going to be a baby and, and some other wine. We don't buy all of you anything for that as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. Our new board member is, is Ray Coney, and he's uh, one of the folks that uh, kind of oversees sciences. Mm -hmm. I always have these light bulbs that go off whenever I'm getting. So, you know, you talk, you inquired about geology. It would be so much fun to have a geology class that, that focused on the, the geology of Kansas City. My gosh, we've got an amazing uh, geological uh, universe right under our feet. And it would be really interesting to talk about that. So, anyway, the, that's what a lot of the... Uh, artifacts in the museum are from them. Yeah. And I, I think that at, at this point in time, people are really interested in, I, at this point in our time, in our lives, we're really interested in what's right here in front of us. And so, you know, a class like that would be great. Mm -hmm. As I love looking at and you know, holding rocks. I mean, I don't know about anybody else, but Going to the Gem and Minerals show as a kid, that was one of my favorite things to do because there were so many pretty and unusual and sparkly looking rocks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Fossils. There are a lot of fossils. Oh, yeah. Um, all okay. kids love it. I'm still finding my bird. So. Thoughts, clarification. The other thing I would just I would just mention is our members too also like some academically related courses. We've had some KC professor teach a couple of courses that have been really well received and well attended. So so I wouldn't shy away from topics that are maybe you know a little did a class on uh, he was the one that did the class in the Supreme Court decisions. Um, and that, that was very well attended and um, they asked him some pretty tough questions and he did an excellent of being right. I still don't know which side he leans toward, but he did an excellent job of just sticking to the back. <laughs> this is a lot. So that's it. Oh, okay. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> good. 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 You know, we have we have a good time, even when the subject is serious. We have a good time. Our civil rights class is a perfect example. Um, our folks that are taking that and who have taken it through all of the iterations that he's done, they, the thing that, that really amazes me the most is how many of them say, I sort of remember that from when I was a kid, but I had no idea. It's a very serious topic. The conversations that they have during break or before or after class is more about their relationship with each other um, than it is about the class. And so they they enjoy spending time together. Um, and that's a piece. It's not the whole piece, but it's an important piece. I feel very fortunate to work for sure. We feel very fortunate to have you. <laughs>